it's a really weird thing that um, one of the biggest um, concerns that an autistic adult will have um, in their in their adult life um, is, is something that uh, that just isn't really um, researched or looked into in any real detail um, by by um, the medical community or, or, or anyone else for that matter um, and it's it's the idea of uh, what, what you call autistic burnout um, now this this isn't an easy video to do um, practically in one respect because it's um, it's all very much I mean there is there is some some research out there but it's it's all very much um, mostly anecdotal uh, and it's just something that you you'll hear come up if you talk to autistic adults for any amount of time at all you can you can bet decent money that the the idea of burnout will crop up in the conversation because it's um it's all consuming and it's something that we 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 have to deal with and but but it's not seen as a kind of integral part of of autism yet is it but it's it's not kind of recognized or accepted sort of officially by um by anyone it seems um it's one of those things where there's still quite a lot of uh you know questions about you know does this really exist is this a real phenomenon or, or is it just something else um which, which can be a little bit frustrating when you consider the nature of it um and and the kind of ubiquity of it as well the fact that you know pretty much any autistic adult will tell you about their experience with this um so first then reasons for that well First of all, uh, the vast majority of research into autism goes into childhood autism. Um, and a lot of that is based on the idea of uh, treatment or cures um, for autism, which which are things, uh, I don't really want to get into too much detail here, but, but are things that aren't seen as being particularly useful, um, partially because, you know, the, the the idea of a cure is almost ludicrous when you consider what autism seems to be, you know, a kind of structural issue that, you know, the, the idea of curing it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but also for those of us who are adults and, and have had to live with it all our lives and are just going to have to continue to live with it, um, <clears throat> the idea of m money being spent on, on just trying to trying to cure this rather than work out how to, you know, rather than maybe split it a little bit, you know, yeah, fine, if you really need to put a bit of money into curing it, then, you know, I don't know, maybe put a bit into that, but it would be highly beneficial for a lot more money, I think, to be spent on trying to work out how to make autistic people's lives a little bit more straightforward. Um, but that's just my opinion, I suppose. Um, but the fact is the majority of money goes into childhood autism. So, you know, things like learning, diff you know, the, the coping at school, um trying to get them to not display autistic behavior i suppose when, it, when i really think about it that's what it tends to boil down to uh, lots of different very expensive ways to try and make it so that autistic children don't act autistic um there we are um then not, not very much money in comparison is poured into um exploring adult experiences of autism which i suppose is why this whole twitter community you know and, and people sharing their experiences on social media is such a massive thing because um it kind of replaces that or it or it makes up for that loss or that lack um that there is i mean the other thing that <clears throat> is a big part of this is that is that that fear that a lot of us kind of autistic people in our 30s and 40s feel um of not really having a clue what to expect when it comes down to um the years to come you know what's it going to be like when we are you know retiring or in our in our in our old age you know what's what's autism like when you get to that age and there are some really cool um you know slightly older people on on, on twitter for example you know in their 60s and so forth um who have got their you know who can who can share their experiences but but the, the, there's there's nothing in in by nothing significant by way of you know formal research into it so burnout long way around to get into that burnout not something that's kind of officially properly recognized but something that is pretty much um a key feature of most autis autistic adults lives um burnout is a name given to what seem to be quite a common set of not symptoms but kind of events that that, that occur or can occur 
in the in the life of an autistic person, usually in adulthood. Um, hard to specify, you know, an age range, but a lot of people seem to reach it in their late twenties and their thirties. But but that's I mean that's purely anecdotal. Um, but it's it's an event, a life event, I suppose you could call it, whereby um, their our capacity for pretense or masking, as we call it, um, is kind of compromised or, or, or ceases to exist. That capacity vanishes or is severely curtailed. So it's like we, we, we go from masking daily, you know, possibly not even realising we're doing it, dum de dum de dum de do you know, day in, day out, day in, day out. And then all of a sudden, often out of nowhere, often in conjunction with other major life events, kind of bang, that coping strategy, that ability to exist in a neurotypical world, um, you know, the, the, the ability to mask and, and present yourself as neurotypical as possible, suddenly disappears to all intents and purposes. It just It just stops. And not just that. Uh, I mean, that, that's only a small part of what we, what burnout seems to be. Um, it's not just the sudden lack of a, being able to kind of pretend anymore. It, it, it's often um, accompanied by by you know kind of incredibly unpleasant depression, um, a sense of utter exhaustion. Um, the, the, the all is almost physiological rather than psychological you know it really does feel um a little bit like something is broken like something has actually snapped um in the, in the brain or wherever it's hard to it's hard to really envis envisage it but that there's a kind of sense of you're, ne you're never going to be the same again it, it is quite a a, a, a common um phrase that people seem to say when they talk about burnout that, that you, you never recover you never really come back from it if you like um it's it's tough to talk about it really is it's people are very willing to say well you, you're just depressed or it's just a breakdown it's just you know midlife crisis or, or something like that and and it might be we only, you know we only have one life each don't we so we only know what we know and it might may well be that all these autistic people are just mistaken and uh, what they describe as being burnout is just a breakdown you know whatever that is um but i don't think it is i think it's i think it's something to do with masking i think it's something to do with the inordinate pressure and um energy that's required to mask, to, to present yourself, you know, to, 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 to come across as being neurotypical for a prolonged period of time. Um, I mean, when you think that, that a lot of people, like I, for example, I'm pretty certain I must have started masking probably around the age of, I don't know, five, six. And I only really became aware of being autistic, for example, at the age of 34. So that's 30 years, roughly, 29 years, 30 years probably of masking pretty much all of the time certainly in public you know at school at work in all those situations um and i i think you know maybe, maybe that's all the brain can take and we have to remember that autistic people's life expectancies i mean there's lots of controversy around this um statistic but autistic people's life expectancy is lower than neurotypicals um and that's partially down to suicide rates which are higher uh, nine times higher in the autistic population compared to the neurotypical. And cardiovascular problems, which is basically another way of saying stress, isn't it? You know, I mean, obviously there are other factors, you know, you know poor diet, poor exercise, that kind of thing. But stress is a big part of it. And those two things combined, suicide and stress, are both related to this idea of masking, aren't they? Of, of having to pretend all the time of being kind of constantly stressed out by not really being you. 
um, and by having to, you know, exert all of this energy on this pretense, on this kind of charade, day in, day out. And, I mean, God, if it leads to suicide, which it seems to do, then, then it makes sense that it might lead to, you know, a kind of slightly less severe, kind of maybe earlier stage, you know, severe mental break of some kind, and that's what we call burnout. Um, I mean, I think burnout's a good term for it, because it does feel like it's just an absolute, just... There's something's just given up. I mean, I, I think, and this is only as precise as anyone can be, but I think I experienced it a few years back. Um, <clears throat> and at the time, it was, I just, you know, I thought and it, it, it was believed that it was, you know, depression and anxiety, you know, caused by various factors. I only got my autism diagnosis after this, you know, about a year or so after this. Um, but looking back, I'm fairly certain that it certainly matches up with what people discuss when they talk about burnout, and um, which is why it's difficult to talk about. Um, and there is that feeling of, you know, never, not really being the same now. It's like something changed, something significant changed at that point um, in the... It feels like in, in the in the, in the way that I um, I'm usually a lot more eloquent than this um, in the way that I process things, in the way that I plan things, in the way that I communicate. It's almost like someone's taken my little autism dial that I've got, you know, and you know it's been kind of hovering around four for most of my life, and someone's just gone and turned it up right to eleven. And like locked it so that I can't do anything about it. And at the same time, dashed in and stolen all of my masks, if you like, you know, just to make the metaphor really weird. Um, it, it, it feels like, the, you know, the, the, almost like the, the, the physical structure of my brain is different to how it used to be. Um, I've described it in the past as, as like everything's still in there. And it's not like I'm not like less intelligent or anything i haven't like lost knowledge but that's that's it's not about knowledge it's about it's like everything is still in there everything emotional if you like is still in there um but rather than kind of viewing it normally if you imagine like a little man standing in, in in a big hall filled with um i don't know whatever is inside someone's head memories ideas dreams images whatever it might be if you imagine like a little man standing in this vast hall and looking around and being like, oh, there's lots of stuff in here, isn't this exciting? It's a little bit like if I'm that little man, you know, inside my own head, if you know what I mean, looking around and, you know, having that kind of ability to to, to know my own kind of psych, you know, psyche. It's almost like now I'm that little man, but someone's put like a hood over my head that's got just a tiny little, tiny little hole in it. Um, and... And and that's that now. I you know I, I can't I can't just see it all kind of um, easily and freely. It's kind of like a pin through a pinhole camera or something like through a really tiny little aperture. Uh, I can mean, you know everything feels more limited and more um, confined almost. It's it's ever so strange. I, I don't I'm not doing a very good job of explaining this. Um, but that's certainly how I've explained it in the past and how it feels. It's like I know all the stuff's still in there, all of my, you know, um, creativity, my my um, favourite things, my passions, my interests, all those kind of things. But I'm way more um, restricted now than I used to be, for whatever reason, possibly because of burnout. And on top of that, I feel like I'm not able to mask at all as well anymore. You know, there was a time where I would be able to, um, you know, at work, I would be able to, you know, have lunch with with, with, with my colleagues or, or um, you know, socialise afterwards or um, I'd spend a lot of time with friends and that kind of thing. I can't do any of that anymore. Uh, it's not it's not a case of won't or, or don't want to. I, I can't. I literally can't. That's not possible, really, anymore. Um, and I don't feel like I can hide certain aspects of, of you know, kind of autistic, exp you know, my my um, my autism as well as I used to be able to. 
So, uh, yeah, yeah. So burnout's quite an interesting little topic, <laughs> to be quite honest. It's... It, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. First of, first of all, we need to try and get together some kind of idea about, you know, is this really a thing then? Is, 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 is this really a thing that, that, that a lot of autistic people have had to um, deal with? Um, and, and try and, you know, kind of quantify that in some way, you know, try and figure out whether, whether it really is a, a specific autistic thing, like something that could be added to the to the to the range of other uh, traits and so on and so forth but, but even more importantly than that something's got to be done about not making it happen <laughs> um because we know that autistic people you know uh, struggle with, with 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 getting older with staying alive quite frankly a lot of the time not all the time you know not not fear mongering but you know it's, it's it's a real problem so um we we need to we we, we need to do something really quite significant about that I think and I think recognizing burnout and talking about it more and being open about it and discussing it and sharing experiences is, is, is certainly a good thing that we can do you know as, as normal people just on Twitter trying to raise awareness and all the rest of it um, just just get it out there you know get 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 it talked about get it recognized get it um, get it on the radar of people so that it's looked into in a bit more detail um, because I mean, I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. I really wouldn't. Um, and the thought that, you know, that there's these autistic children, for example, you know, kids at school that I teach who, who are going to grow up to be autistic adults. And, and I don't want them to have to deal with this. I, I would, I would feel far happier, generally speaking, if I knew they were entering into an adult world that, um, that, that was, that was less hostile and therefore less likely to lead to this kind of outcome. Um, so yeah, that's, I suppose that's my little video on burnout. It would not be the most cheerful thing that I've done, um, but you know, maybe, maybe of use, maybe, maybe interesting to people. Um, I will follow this up, I think with something a bit more bit more cheerful but uh, certainly I hope that's given you something to think about um, if you are autistic yourself and you've experienced burnout then you know leave a comment or 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 get in touch you know you can you can contact me on Twitter that's not a problem at all um, and you know just 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 share experiences and you know, see if there is any commonality here or whether it's just me you know or just individuals having their an individual experience um, so yeah, get in touch, let, let me know and we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay. Rightio. I will do another video another day. Um, I will see you again soon.